In this video, we'll be connecting and charging this DC battery bank up for the first time from the Benning DC rectifier unit. The arrangement of the batteries is two banks with 55 cells in each bank, upper and lower, wired in series, and the two banks operating in parallel. These two volt cells give us approximately 110 volts DC available to the emergency system. First job is to make the final connections for the DC supply that goes off to the rectifier panel. With the batteries connected, we should have a voltage back to the DC rectifier panel now. So we go to the incoming switch and check the voltage, just under 116 volts. So we now install the links into the isolator and prepare to close up. First though, we switch on the DC distribution panel that is fed from this unit, as it has a voltage indication on the front, and we'll be able to see the increase in voltage as the batteries are charged. As this is high current DC, and we don't know the condition of this switch, we'll put some PPE on whilst we close it up. Okay, so the panel itself now should read the battery voltage. It's 116 volts. Now it's time to go through the sequence of energizing the Bennings DC rectifier modules. Firstly, we put on the AC supply and measure the phase voltages and the voltage down to earth on each of the three phases. Once we're happy that's with intolerance, we can then proceed to power up the master module. In this case, we're gonna make that one the top module. So we press the power button and it will now run through its startup sequence. At the moment, we're just showing the battery voltage, 116 volt, with no charge being applied and we'll show the full sequence of this first module starting up. As you can see, there's no increase in output at the moment. This module is still booting, but it is starting to measure now the voltage on the batteries. Once it's happy that the module is okay, the green light will come on and it will start passing a charge current to the batteries. So you see the current is starting to increase. It's 122.9 volts being applied, 38 amps. As you can see, the current is reducing. So the batteries are pretty much charged at the moment. On the distribution panel, we show we've got 123 volts on the system now. Using a clamp meter, we'll just check the charging current going off to the batteries. At this particular time, we're reading 15 amps. We can check that against the module current. 15 amps. Now we power up the control system and the front display unit. We got three flashing red lights up that indicates there was a fault on the system, but when they're flashing, it means you can reset them. If they're solid red, it means the system fault is still active. Right, the system's booted. It's measuring the bus bar voltage. Reset the fault now. We're showing at the moment our charging current has reduced now to 12.6 amps. Next, we will power the second module up. And after 
for a while. Green light should illuminate. And this bank will take over the charging current from the top module. As the display sequences through, we should see what the current is. It's now 11 amps. The top module now is not delivering any current. That's the second module stabilized. Power the third module up. Followed by the fourth module. And finally, the last module. These modules are all working in parallel and will pick up the load as required. Okay, we're charging at nine amps now. We'll just go into the logs and clear all the events and the faults and then check that the fault log has in fact been cleared. So there's no failures up on the system. And no events are recorded. Finally, we just want to check the charging current of the batteries and have a look at the system to make sure everything is okay. Top bank is charging at 3.7 amps and the bottom bank is charging at 3.7 amps as well. We'll just leave the system now to fully charge and leave it in service.